In this video, I'm exploring box and whisker charts in Power BI. They're a very powerful tool to analyze your project management work. So let's dive in. The box and whisker chart is a real charm. There's a lot that you can read from a single visual. But just like Gantt chart visuals, there's more than one custom visual that you can use. I create exploration videos like this one for Power BI visuals regularly on the channel. And if you don't want to miss a thing, make sure to click like and subscribe. It helps the channel a lot. As per February 2020, there's two custom visuals that you can grab from the store within Power BI. There's the box and whisker chart on the left, and there's the box and whisker chart by MAQ software. MAQ has been a regular company that pops up in my channel. So I'm very excited to see that they also have something for the box and whisker chart. And the good thing here is that both visuals are certified visuals. This is great because they can be used for printouts and other visualizations on the Power BI service website. I'm also going to share two additional visuals that are closely related to the box and whisker chart. So our case in project management might be obvious, but let's state it nonetheless. With the box and whisker chart, I can visualize the duration and work related to project types, phases, maybe specific tasks, users, or other scenarios, and see what differentiators we have there. So for instance, we can see that Eric has a very wide differentiation between the um, duration of his projects, whereas Miriam is very closely into uh, the 60 du days duration. And when I hover over this visual, what you see is, well, there's a category, Miriam, and we have some values like a quartile, and a quartile is 25% of the total sample. So there's a sample of five values here, and we have a maximum value of 75. Then we can state that 75% of all Miriam's projects are less than 65 days. Then you have the median, median and then we have the average. And there is a difference, and you could look it up on the standard deviation those two will be the same. But if there's, but if the sample is more diverse, the median and the average won't be the same. And there's quartile one. Quartile one is the first or the lowest amount, 25% of the sample. And her shortest project takes, 20, takes 42 days to complete. Now this is the box and whisker chart, but let's, create them out of scratch. And for subscribers of the newsletter, this uh, file will also be available. Okay, so let's gather those two visuals. The ellipses, get more visuals, get more visuals. It opens up that new pane of all the visuals that you can grab from the app source. And if we click here on box, we'll see the MAQ software version and we will see the data scenarios version. Now both are, as I mentioned before, certified visuals. So that is very cool. Because I already have them on my file, I won't include them in anymore. But just know that they're accessible through the box, the search box, clicking on box, <laughs> and you get the visuals. So let's open up the first one, box and whisker chart. And let's increase the size of this screen. So on the visualization pane, what you see is a category, a sampling and values. So you need to decide what you need to differentiate your values from. So this is the category. And in our example, we're going to look at the owners of our projects. So that is going to be our first one, owning ID name. With that, we now have the owner as a differentiator of our values. Then the sampling is going to be the amount of projects that we're going to analyze. So the count of projects that are being analyzed. And then 
we need to have values and values needs to be some kind of measure. Now, this can be the default durations that you get with the source or you can select a or you can choose to go for a full blown measure with DAX query. Now I'm going to use the DAX query one because it looks nicer in our screen here. And with that, we have our box and whisker chart as we expect to see it. And if I hover over any of these values, you'll see that box popping up, that toolbox telling us what are we looking at. Now there's a couple of things that you can change in, it, in this one. And the most interesting one that I found, the option to create a constant line. And that constant line is here. So if you have a value that you want to have as a preferred duration of all your projects, uh, maybe it is the average of everything, then you can state that by, for instance, setting that to 70, having that as a bright red color. Oh, we give it a name of the desired average and we'll give it a value of 70 dur days duration. And you can change the transparency to either not be transparent at all or very transparent. So we'll set it to pop up just a little bit more. We want to have a solid line. And we'll add a, we'll set it as behind. And there you go. There you see that that line pops up. And the data label itself might also need to be a red color. So that is one of the things that I really like about this visual, a constant line that you can take as a guiding, guiding line for all of the different project managers and how they uh, reflect compared to that 70 line. Miriam is closer, but still half of her projects don't reach that 70 line. And for me, it counts as the same. Only 25% of all of my projects are in this section here. So these are the quartiles that is stated in the pop-up box as well. So let's have a look how the MAQ software version of the box and whiskers charts looks. I have it here and let's open that up. Let's give that some more space. And here you see that there's more values that you can choose from. There's a dot size, there's the legends, there's tool tips again. And one of the things I really like about this visual is the access category one and two. So for the access, what we're going to do here is we're going to add the project ID because we're going to use this as a sample. Then we have our owner name as being the axis. And we're going to take the duration as the values again. Now, as you can see, there's a nice differentiator between the, or, uh, between the visual on the left and the MAQ version. It takes into account a color differentiation between the top half or the top quartile and the bottom uh, quartile. And we can even manage, and we can moderate how that looks. Uh, there is no differentiation between Eric and Miriam, however, as there is in this version. So one of the things I like is that the access category, if we add the username again, we'll see a nice differentiation between the two visuals, uh, between the two box charts, between the two boxes. That makes it easier to differentiate, especially if you have a large set of project managers that you want to uh, analyze. Now, another thing here is that the MAQ version gives you the option to find out single value projects. And here it has the project ID as a, a name. We can, of course, also select the subject, which is the project for the web name of a project name. 
And now we have hardware development as being one of the longest duration uh, projects. And the top one is the new business import version two. Now each of these represent a single project. If you have a lot, lot of projects as a project manager, this might not look as intuitive or useful, but just know that you can switch this off as well. And this little, this, this and this big button here is the mean and we have also got a average value, which is called median in this version of the Box and Whisker visual. Now we can differentiate between the top half and the bottom half by looking in the box options. We have an upper box that we can turn blue. We have a lower box that we can turn orange, for instance. And this will count for each and every value within our visual. There's also an option to change some of these values. If you're good in math, you might know what the differences are. I didn't pay that much attention, I think, because what happens is these values change the settings of how your box and whisker charts look. So make sure that you know what you're looking at before changing all these values. The whisker type is set basically to min and max. So the most lowest value and the top value. You could, however, choose for a one and a half quartile. So that takes into account roughly 33% of your uh, total stack. And that shows up nicely here or it is exactly one and a half quartile or one standard deviation so there's a number of ways to analyze your box and whisker chart when you're using the maq version of the box and whisker chart visual so there's also an option to change the orientation make it a horizontal one doesn't look that nice but there's an option to do it Nonetheless, there's a way to exclude the mean if you want to. You can also change the size of the mean if this is too screaming for you. And there's ways to change the x axis, the y axis. Category splits can be done or turned off. And there's a way to change every dot. You can even change them turn them off or keep them on and make them and make them a little bit smaller or uh, bigger so suffice to say these two make excellent sense for us then there is a third visual that I would like to share with you that's called the violin chart it is sort of like a box and whisker chart but there is a another type of visualization that is done so here is an example of the same data that we share uh, that we've seen previously, but with a violin shape attached to it. Now there's a nice description of what this Power BI visual actually does. Uh, it tells us also that on the lowest five percent, this um, the violin closes, as well as the top ninety-five percent. It will. Uh, close up. There's a white circle for the mean as well as a white line for the median and the range between the first and the third quartiles are visualized with this line and the first and the third quartile are where the box is just like with the box and whisker chart. So this visual is also available on the visualization uh, app store and what you can do is you can add a sample, so the project name or the project ID, uh, then the mean data, uh, the measuring data, which can be a measure or a uh, DAX query that you created, as well as the category, again, is the owner ID name. 
The last visual I want to share is something I'm very person personally very proud of. I created my first R visual in Power BI. And this is exactly the same data, only created with code and with R code. Uh, so I'm very proud of it. So maybe you, you think that it's not something special. Uh, one of the downsides of R visuals is that we don't have a hover over functionality. And that's something that we will miss when interacting with Power BI, right? Because we're so used to those toolboxes. But suffice to say, if you click on a R visual or an R script, um, this R script editor turns up. And if I open this up, what you see is the R script that I actually used. Now this file is available for you if you subscribe to the newsletter. And I added some guidance on what to expect and how to create this custom visual. So make sure to read the green sections as well as, as the rest of it. I'm very proud and happy that I was able to create that R visual uh, together with the violin and the box and whisker charts. These just make excellent sense for a project manager to have in his or her arsenal of visuals. Now, if you like this video, there's more videos in which I explore custom visuals in Power BI. And make sure to like this video and click on the subscribe button. I'll be back with more custom visual exploration soon.